Also for Northern Entertainment, the Northern Alex here. Oh, welcome, welcome. Um, this is not a raw uncut and this is not a channel update. This is the day that finally my parts for the uh, poor man's track IR arrived, like I always call it. And I'm going to show you guys uh, in detail what parts those are. Um, what I made out of them and uh, I'm gonna show you also how to hack the uh, PS3 what is it called the PS3 I uh, it's the camera that goes with uh, move and uh, you can hack that one very easily and it is a perfect camera for uh, IR system because it goes up to 120 Hertz yes you heard right 120 Hertz is what this thing runs at so it is super smooth and it is absolutely perfect for what we need it for so without further ado let me show you how it's done so now you're gonna see the most important part of every of my builds is a big cup of fresh coffee uh, you don't necessarily need that. What you will need though is uh, uh, either like this one, a uh, normal utility knife or an uh, exacto knife. I used a utility knife as you can see. Um, a couple of uh, precision screwdrivers. And then of course you need the PS3i. Now you can pick those up for about, well I picked that one up for $5 plus shipping for, uh, on eBay. And uh, there's hundreds of them out there, so. And as I said, the perfect thing about them is uh, they run 120 hertz or 120 FPS uh, either or. Now, first thing what you want to do is uh, in the corners, there is uh, four little rubbers that hide, uh, or uh, not rubber, but yeah, well, I guess they are some kind of rubberized uh, material that hide the uh, screws so you want to get those out as you can see I'm gonna take them out here it's fairly easy if it doesn't work with uh, screwdriver then as you can see here in a second I'm gonna use uh, the utility knife just the edge of the blade or the tip of the blade just to get them out you can see here that it's fairly easy so then once you get those out you want to take those four screws out and then this part here looks really really painful and uh, you need a lot of force to pry the housing apart and don't be afraid it will not snap i thought a couple of times that this thing is just gonna burst into two pieces and everything is gonna fall apart but uh, you need actually force initially to to uh, get it apart it's only to a certain point but uh, as you can see here in a sec i'm gonna use force the only way you can get it apart now what you don't want to do is you don't want to use the screwdriver you must uh, want to be careful and don't use it on the circuit board because otherwise you snap the circuit board in half and you really don't want to do that see this this took me a total of almost 10 minutes so I just cut it uh, here and uh, as you can see here it's where I pretty much lose my patience and just okay go apart and then it just comes apart and it's very easy now then you see um, there's three screws on top two on the sides and then two more on the lower part that hold the there is the those two lower ones are the ones that hold the assembly on the CCD chip and then of course you have uh, uh, two more screws well, actually, two more screws that hold the foot of the camera. And uh, once you have those out, there's two more screws that hold the CCD chip, as I said, or the lens assembly on the CCD chip. See those? Those are the ones that hold the circuit board. the last one that holds the circuit board and then the two that I'm now those are the ones that actually hold the uh, lens assembly once they are out I can just take the circuit board off which 
pops off easily, very easily. And there's the lens assembly. And they have, well you can't see it really here, but this is the uh, CCD chip, so you really want to make sure that there's no dust on it whatsoever, because this will really, really mess up your day. If you uh, get dust on there and you don't realize it, then you put it back together, nothing will work. And you're gonna have terrible picture quality, so you really want to make sure. So here you can see the R filter, and this is what we want to take out. And now is the part where you really, really need patience. It took me almost 20 minutes because this is uh, heat pressed, and plus um, they used a little bit of uh, industrial strength glue in there to get the lens to sit. So you really need a lot of patience. Now, I skipped almost 20 minutes on this one um, because I didn't want to show you all the aggravation. But as you can see, it, I, I used the screwdriver and whatnot. And there is this little piece here that you see on the tip of my finger. That's the IR filter right there. It's like a little white lens. And once that is out, um, yeah, this is three quarters of the battle right there is won. Uh, now you want to take in the next step. So this is going to be my low pass filter, my low pass light filter. Uh, just take an old, uh, old disc. Now I had this one still laying around from days gone by. Oh, you can alternatively you can also use. Uh, normal old-school uh, uh, photography film picture uh, it has to be uh, developed film though so and you just want to make sure that you get the here you can see the difference that the low-pass filter makes this is what the camera sees with low-pass filter and now I'm gonna take it away and yeah nice and blinding so you just want to cut this to size and kind of press it in there. You can use glue if you want, I didn't. I just cut it so it went snug in there, really snug. And uh, once you get this in, you're almost done. And here's one thing that I learned the hard way. Well, there I'm using a glass table, but uh, if you do not have a glass table or anything, just go to Staples or one of those shops and just get a normal, uh, a normal cutting board or something like that. You definitely want a surface that you can cut on and don't want to cut into your kitchen table if you work there or into your desk. So here you can see I'm going to take the whole piece uh, so I put the whole piece back together. Get this all nicely put together. Make sure that there is no dust in the assembly whatsoever because it will mess up your day. And then here you're gonna see the final result after everything is said and done. This is how the camera looks like, or this is the picture that it's gonna take and, uh, of the three points, and this is pretty much the same that Track IR will do. So guys, uh, I will absolutely show you how to set up the free track then, and um, how to get everything set up so it works smoothly, but this will be part two, because I don't want to make those too long. It's informative for you guys, and uh, there will be part two. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.